start with this interesting concept of hydrogen service. So in hydrogen service, usually the molecules are in H2. That is, there are two molecules of H2 that are attached to it. If you see, these small H2 molecules are floating together. But what happens if we apply high pressure to it? What would happen to these molecules? So, when we apply high pressure to these molecules, because of such high pressure, the molecules will break, that the bond will go away. So, these minuscule atoms will then get separated. Now, this separation would be very harmful for us as instrumentation engineers and can be very hazardous to our instruments. How? Let us look at the case study. So here, let's imagine this is our hydrogen service and here our diaphragm seal is put. So this is our piping flange and this is a diaphragm seal system and here's the flange. Now what happens here is, in such cases, if the hydrogen is broken because of high pressure, what would happen is these molecules will travel up, up to the diaphragm. And once they get traveled up to the diaphragm because the hydrogen molecules are very minuscule in their size, so they can permeate through the diaphragm from flange and once they get inside there is the pressure is not that high as compared to what is in the service so because of such a case these molecules recombine inside the diaphragm and then they stay within the diaphragm as h2 molecules and now they can't come back to the service so for such cases our readings in the diaphragm seal would be wrong and this is a harmful scenario but how can we avoid this thing so, for such a case, let's again take the molecules back to their place. Now, in order to prevent these molecules from traveling towards the flange or towards the diaphragm seal fill fluid, we try to insert a particular layer of gold, which is called as gold plating. So, what does this gold plating do is it basically acts as a barrier which doesn't allow these molecules to actually go and permit inside the diaphragm. So, the molecules of hydrogen, even if it's in high pressure service, get stuck on the gold plating and are not able to insert. I hope you are finding these videos valuable. If yes, then please consider subscribing and especially press the bell icon. Now let's look into the next interesting part of it, which is the thickness of the gold plating. How thick have we to keep the gold plating? So for such a case, let's look into two cases. If it's a diaphragm seal system or if it's just the transmitter, you don't need a diaphragm seal to it, but it's an hydrogen service. So for the first case, we usually go for 4 micro mm. But for the other case, we usually go for 25 micro mm. Now, these are thus the thumb rules. It depends on your application. However, API standard has a different stand on such a scenario. What does API standard say about this thing? API standard states that it's the quality of the gold plating that's more important than the thickness. So, it, this thickness might vary depending on your corrosion allowance of the service or the other factors which are required. But especially the care must be taken that gold plating must be done and the thickness should be such that the hydrogen atom should not permeate. And as we discussed, the thumb rules can be used if there is no other design basis or criteria available to us. Now the next thing is the base material. This is a very important consideration that gets missed out on a lot of requisitions. What happens is when you have your diaphragm seal and it's gold plated, but what if the gold plating fails or the gold plating is not sufficient enough to withstand? You need to know what should be the base material and also the quality of the gold plating on the base material. How well would it get coated? So for such a case, API standard especially recommends SS316 material. So this base material usually is recommended to be SS316 and below it would be our gold plating. What is the least recommended one? It's tantalum because it is the least recommended one when it comes to hydrogen service. This metal is not suitable for hydrogen services. If your gold plating fails, this material is going to be exposed to the service which is absolutely not recommended. This is as per the APARP 551 recommendations. So let's quickly revise and see that as per the special standards or like what are the 
criteria which can be written in bold that you need to follow while having gold plating. So the first criteria that APA RP551 recommends is that the pressure should be greater than 6 bar. Now this exact value of 6 bar can be varied but as we discussed earlier if it's high pressure surface only then the H2 molecules will break and that would lead to permeation in the diaphragm. So basically the, as a thumb rule they have set it as 6 bar. Some clients go about 10 bar. Some are more conservative and go above 4 bar. It depends but if there's no uh, client design basis available you can go with API recommendation of pressure being greater than 6 bar. The second one is quite clear that is it has to be hydrogen inside the surface. So it's only when hydrogen is there you would have to consider gold plating. The third consideration is something new. Now why is this recommendation there? The reason for this being is because as we said in high pressure the molecules would vibrate and get away from each other. Similarly in high temperature the molecules would absorb heat and they would start to vibrate and their bond would break and once they break again it's like the same concept where they would be so minuscule that they can transfer inside the diaphragm seal or inside the transmitter fill fluid and then that would lead us to uh, have uh, the molecules again recombine back and it would be difficult for us to maintain uh, the layer of hydrogen being protected. So for such a case we have to go for gold plating. So these were the three considerations. Now if you're liking these videos there's also a free ebook on engineering standards. It's a free ebook and almost 1500 plus engineers have downloaded this ebook and I've found it very valuable. It's got simple PIP standards of how they're arranged and how can you start with them because there are small standards with just two to three pages or six pages around standards but nothing about 200 pages or something of that sort. So it's good to start learning and one of the things is it's very well segregated. Also, if you have any doubts, you can contact me via my LinkedIn page or via my blog or any other uh, way possible. Or even you can comment in the comment section the way you're comfortable with. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it valuable.